Feeding. 120, Edward, take one. Mark. Marker. Action. Action! Action! Sounds good. Let's uh, shoot it. Full sound. Sound speed. Do you want to take one? Speeding. Marker. Set. In action. So you're uh, originally from San Diego. Yeah. You uh, attended school down there and then transferred to San Francisco. Uh, yeah, that's right. I uh, I was working at an after-school program for kids, and I had a dwarf hamster. And when I was going to film school, I made a few short films that had the same actors that are in Etienne, and I thought it'd be fun to see those characters in another storyline. And I remember Jeff didn't want to tell me the idea. He just printed it out on a piece of paper and said he just wrote it like in one or two sentences. It said, Etienne is a story about Richard and his dying hamster, and along the way they learn about life, love, and death. I read it and I was completely fascinated by it. Very funny, very different. It's kind of a small, intimate story with a little bit of adventure, but it's very sweet and pure. For a couple of months, we were kind of sort of kidding about the fact that we would make a movie revolving around this idea, and then slowly we were convinced that we had to make it. This is historic. I'm giving him the script for the first time. Are you documenting this? <laughs> Jeff was really big on not having my, my character have a, a persona that was artificial or, or, or created. So we never spent any time really developing, you know, the way that my character would react. He, he just kind of wanted to be more of my own gut reaction. I wrote the role for Richard and for the idea of Richard on a bicycle. I thought that idea was really funny and entertaining, but I couldn't imagine myself as an audience member watching Richard for an hour and a half. So I decided to add in the Elodie character, to give her a bigger role. Well, I think Elodie is in that stage of life where she's not quite sure what she wants and where she wants to go. But I think that she's a person who has a really good heart and she is generally open to new things and wants to experience life. I could find a, a lot of the things that she was in myself very easily. There's about three lines. I don't know if I can handle it. I've been rehearsing for like three weeks, and I think I got two of them down. So we'll see. If the, there's the third one that's tricky. It's the one that you started with. So yeah. When I was writing the script, I had specific people in mind. Molly and Matt and everyone in the San Francisco scenes I had known, and they're friends of friends. The man who loses his dog and had all those flyers, Vito, he was actually one of my classmates in film school. At the vet clinic, the veterinarian, Dr. Mosier, is actually my film professor. I was writing the script uh, while I was in his class. Don't tell him. And then the woman at the front desk at the vet clinic is the lead singer of my band. Her name is Sarah. The roommate character of, for Elodie is Courtney. I've seen her work before and I wanted to get her involved in one of my films. The French backpacker is a visual effects artist for our website. He green screened the hamster. As we were developing the website, uh, my producer and I were thinking, what about Tebow as the backpacker? Then there's the band Great Northern who plays themselves. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. I sent the script to uh, Rachel. She read it when they were on tour and she liked it and she got so long involved. They were able to work it into their schedule and even play a couple of their real songs in the film. When I was in college, I became very obsessed with Kaveh's films. He's been kind of a hero of mine. I turned on his films to Jeff. Jeff also really enjoyed his work. And I think when you see the film, when you see Kaveh's performance, it, it's very much Kaveh. Man in Coat, um, um, I, I think of him as kind of like, like me. I really like you know conversations with strangers in all places. I mean, it's a nice thing. I think the problem is people are so scared of other people. You're always trying to like reassure everybody that you're not dangerous or crazy. But the real star of the show, of course, is the hamster. This is the star right here. We have another one, but he's coming. There's actually more than one hamster. There's, I think, like seven of them. 
and, and, and I think they multiply it. They're really sort of independent creatures that don't really want to be handled. For instance, I mean, there's a, they, they, they continually want to move, so you have to kind of do this hand shuffling thing. It's kind of like a treadmill for, for the hamster because they don't really relax. They, they're, they're always on the go. And they're kind of funny creatures in that way. <laughs> I loved the hamsters. The hamsters are great. You know, they all were a little different. Some of them were kind of hyper. Some of them were a little bit lazier and would, you know, sleep there for you. Etienne didn't abuse me, but um, Jeff did. Jeff was, he was the, I'd say, the, the creative force behind the project. Is Jenny here? No. Jenny's not here. Do you need Jenny? No. I just fixed it with my hand. You see that? Dude. Hair and makeup right here. So the scene's going good? It's going extraordinary. You, you want to see the film that we shot? I can show you. All right, let's do it. What you got, man? Hey, Mike, I'm going to show him the film we shot. What? I think so, though. I think I would have found Richard somehow and told him what that I'd found his hamster at some point and gone and looked for it with him. Could be a uh, ATN2. <laughs> Etienne! Cut! <laughs> flying instead of on a road trip because it's much easier to fly. I don't know, I mean that's the tricky thing about the movie is like are you gonna buy the, the basic premise um, about the hamster? Um, I don't know, I think we'll see. I have to give a bit of a disclaimer, a, a post disclaimer after you have seen the film. Ideally, we would like to see the animal be free and uh, start a family and, and all that. But um, the reality is, if you release a domesticated animal into the wild like that, it will die. So the humane thing is to not do what we did in the movie.